Joining me now is the play-by-play man for the Miami Marlins, a former friend of our program here on MLB Network, Paul Severino. And, Paul, thanks for taking a couple minutes to be with us. And I tell you what, this is a club that's playing some good baseball right now. What have you seen from them through their first three weeks of the year? Well, it's good to be back with you, first of all, Alana. It's always a pleasure. Um, No, you know what? I think I'm seeing a lot of excitement. I see uh, a, a lot of what we hoped we would see, and that's free and easy, loose, fun, excitement, the whole nine yards. Um, It's a really fun team to watch right now. And, you know, I know you and Mad Dog say it all the time. You can't win a division in April, but you can lose one. Um, And for them to get off to a good start, they had a a tougher schedule the first couple of weeks of the season against a bunch of teams that were over 500 last year. They held their own. They uh, once they got back home after a one and four road trip, it was uh, it was rough that first road trip. But once they got back home, they've been playing really well. If one three straight series and away we go. Yeah, they're on a seven game winning streak and they're doing it with pitching. I'm not certain that we on the outside knew how good of a starting staff that this team has right now. Pablo Lopez goes for today and he's only one of two starters Sev, that has an ERA under one. What has made him so dynamic so far? I tell you what, I think um, I, I get it. Listen, you know, I've, I've been in, in, in your guys' shoes like the, on the national level and you just kind of pick and choose and where the narratives are and you always gravitate toward the teams that are winning 95 and 100 games. And I've said it before <laughs> and I'll say it right here. Um, you know, Sandy, Pablo, Trevor might be a, the best one, two, three in baseball, dot, 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 that nobody talks about. Um, they're, yeah. they're really, really good. Sandy and Pablo, especially with a few more years under their belt, are uh, as good a one and two as anybody. Um, they just don't have the hardware to go along with it, whether it be, you know, New York with DeGrom and Scherzer. DeGrom, of course, when he's healthy or uh, guys in L.A. and with the world championships and the Cy Youngs and everything else. But it, it's coming. And, um, you know, I think Mel Stottlemyre Jr., the pitching coach, is as good as it gets in Major League Baseball. Uh, He's done a great job with these guys. I've been fortunate enough to have the best seat in the house to watch these guys grow Mm -hmm. uh, from when they kind of burst on the scene in 2018. And they have really developed into, uh, as I said, maybe the best one-two punch that nobody talks about in baseball. And and even the three, four, and five are not so bad. Trevor Rogers, second in the National League Rookie of the Year vote last year. Eliezer Hernandez has some pretty good stuff. He's trying to find himself right now. And then Jesus Luzardo had another good start. He first start of the season, he had 12 strikeouts. So, it's a really good starting staff, and, uh, and, and I forgive everyone that doesn't pay attention to this group, but I will say this, <laughs> by, uh, by the all-star break, it's going to be on the tip of everybody's tongue. Yeah, Lazardo was on MLB Network the other day, and he was just talking about how much Mel Stottlemyre has helped him and certainly well-respected pitching coach around the league. And the Marlins, Paul, as you know better than anybody, start a three-game set with the Diamondbacks tonight. We will get to see Pablo Lopez on the hill. What should, be we, what should we be looking for? He's fantastic. He really is. He continues to grow. Now, I don't pretend to know everything about pitching mechanics, so I am merely relaying what I have heard from those that do. But over the last few years, he has done a great job in cleaning up his pitching mechanics, simplifying everything else. You can see that he's much tighter uh, in his delivery and everything is much more repeatable. And Pablo is among being a great pitcher and one of the nicest human beings on the planet. Uh, He's extremely intelligent, too, and he is a great pitcher, not just a thrower, but a great pitcher. And I I bring up his mechanics and I bring up his intelligence because what he's been able to do to help him get to another level on the mound has been by by simplifying his mechanics. He's been able to now read swings and read bats, and he can really become his own best pitching coach out there. Um, You know, we saw it maybe a couple of years ago. There might be Uh, an outing where there's one inning that gets away from him. He's cruising, 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 and then in the fourth inning, it's like, what just happened? Three runs scored, and it happens in the snap of a finger. But now he he hasn't really let things get away from him. There haven't been blow-up innings. There haven't been blow-up starts. Forget about that. Um, But he's just just super smart, uh, really intelligent, knows the game, knows how to pitch. And between he and and a a battery, likely tonight, I haven't seen the lineup, uh, but, but with Jacob Stallings behind the plate, it's it's about as smart as a battery as you can have out there and uh, and i'm looking forward to watching it and um pablo will never demand it but i'll, I'll go to bat for him and say he wants to be known as the pitcher with the best era in baseball <laughs> well he has it three and oh with a 0.39 earned run average let's switch gears really quick to the offense Chaz chisholm has had jazz chisholm has had a nice start of course and jorge soler needs to get things going what have you noticed about those two in particular 
Jazz is, Jazz is unbelievable. He's so dynamic. He's fun to watch. Uh, I'm jealous of his blue hair. We know that. But, um, you know, he, he's got an amazing power-speed combination. And this year, he's really put it all together. Last year, and I talked to him about this just before the season started, I said, Jazz, last year you played great. You had a really good season, but there were deficiencies in the game. The defense was a little bit spotty at times, or there were some strikeouts or whatnot. But, you know, he's focused on every pitch right now. Um, and every play, and he forgets the miscues. He forgets the strikeouts real quick. He's been great. And Solaire put two balls into orbit over the weekend. So I think that he's really starting <laughs> to come around. Uh, and, and that's the thing. Once this team starts to hit, if the pitching continues, um, they're not a team that people will think can win 100 games, but they're a team that can go out there and win every single night. And we'll see where that adds up at the end. Yeah, so Lair off to a bad start, but it looks like things are going in the right direction for him. Jazz Chisholm is also a lot of fun to watch. Paul Severino, we appreciate you taking a few moments to be with us, and uh, best of luck the rest of the way. All right, talk to you soon.